Okay, good morning, Ridgewood. We are joined today by Mr. Lou. Mr. Lou, how are you doing? Good. How are you guys doing? Good, Mr. Lou. We're good. Um, so why don't you start, uh, you know, just maybe by telling us a little bit about what you do at, at Ridgewood High School. What's your, your position and, and your role? Sure. Um, so I am a biology teacher and I also teach two sections of Hope and Department of Science this year. Um, and it's my second year here at Ridgewood. And I actually used to be an ecologist. So I try to, you know, rope kind of fun things from my past careers in. And I think it's more fun that way. Um, harder to do that online, but that's, you know, a different problem. But um, I know now I can't really go outside and start catching fish with people. So, uh, you know, it's, it's a bit of an issue. But um, yeah, I'm also one of the advisors for the environmental club and do a little bit with the photography club and, you know, going to the town green team meeting. So we're looking at ways to kind of make Ridgewood a more environmental and sustainable place as well. And it's a lot easier when no one's there in the building at all. So I don't have to try too hard now, which is, you know, good in some ways, I suppose. But uh, yeah, that's, that's great. That's really a run out of time, Dan, yeah. yeah, that's great. And you've been, uh, yeah, you've been definitely a, a, a valuable and welcomed addition to uh, the Ridgewood High School family. Tell us a little bit more about uh, your your former career as a, an ecologist. Oh, God, yeah. Um, so I've worked for maybe three or four different federal agencies. And I mean, the big summary of the career is I would work after graduating from undergrad, I did a bunch of these seasonal jobs um, because there's a lot of field work that needs to be done in the summer, but then it can be kind of hard to find to find work in the winter. So, um, if, I mean, if you want the run of how I got involved in teaching, I started subbing at the high school I used to go to just to cover, cover that time. And then I would leave around April for some other state um, doing some other, you know, job outside. And I would keep coming back to this teaching thing. And eventually I just got tired of, you know, stringing those seasonal jobs together. So I went to grad school and naturally to pay the bills, I started TAing. And then I realized at the end of that, you know what? I like teaching way more than the stuff I'm actually supposed to be doing right now. Um, I took it a bit more seriously and then um, I had to write a, a thesis and, you know, just writing reports. I mean, it, it's important stuff, no doubt, but I just didn't enjoy it and thought, you know what, teaching for a significant part of a year, that's way more fun. But um, so that's what I ended up doing. And, but you know, the job, I mean, I love field work and being paid to be outside was awesome. Um, I worked with bats, I worked with fish, um, caught birds, worked for salamanders the last time out. Um, found more ticks than salamanders, but you know, the, it was all really, really, really fun stuff. Um, so in some ways I miss it. If, if I could find a job where I can teach for the school year and then just find some perfectly timed field jobs to be outside and, you know, get paid to do it, dream situation for me. That would be awesome. Nice. Um, so if, if I'm not mistaken, you mentioned graduate school. If I'm not mistaken, you were at University of Michigan, right? Yes. Yeah. And we had, we had Mr. Luckenbill on the other day, you know, Michigan state grad in the hallways yet. Um, but so why don't you tell us a little bit about how you, how you came by, by way of, of Michigan to come all the way to New Jersey? Um, so I grew up in New Jersey, so I just kind of kept coming back. Um, frankly, the way I got to Michigan was um, when I decided to apply to grad school, it was very, very late in the year. Um, to the point where most grad schools, the deadlines had already passed. Um, so I just applied to what was available to me. And um, it was actually Michigan and two schools outside of the United States. Um, they were both in Canada at the time. And uh, just kind of financially and thinking about all that stuff, I ended up going with, with Michigan. And I don't regret that at all. So take that Michigan State. But, um, you know, after that, I kind of came back. I had to finish up my thesis and figured I it would be hard to do a full-time job at the same time. Um, but, you know, just kept working at the school I worked at. And um, I, I mean, I theoretically, I guess I could have gotten, you know, teaching credentials for any state and figured I'm in Jersey, might as well do Jersey. Um, so that's how I ended up sticking around here. Well, we're glad you came back. I'm, um, glad, I, I'm glad too, yeah. <laughs> Hey, um, obviously this is a, a, a 
a difficult time for a lot of people. And, you know, we all wish we were in the building and um, with our kids. Um, what have you learned about yourself in the last few weeks? And then um, any advice you'd give to our students out there that are uh, sitting at home listening to you? Yeah, I mean, I think for every teacher right now, especially having to be adaptable and being able to change the way we do things extremely quickly. And, um, you know, it's nice hearing messages from the community saying, you know, you're doing, you know, you're doing a pretty nice job with that. And um, it means a lot, I mean, because frankly, I feel like I'm working just as much as I did um, before we had to switch to virtual because it's so much harder keeping track of everybody. Um, when everyone has completely different situations, you can't necessarily see what's going on or, you know, talk face to face, like seeing exactly where, where students are. So really trying to manage that and trying to remember situations that people are in. I mean, that's been pretty challenging for me. And that's not even getting to, you know, biology and science as a whole are way more fun in person. Um, the most I can really, I mean, and I can't, it, I don't want to put people's, you know, lives at risk of getting infected by going into the building, grabbing some supplies and then coming back to demonstrate them at home. So. Um, I mean, the most I can do, I mean, you can probably see the deer skull in the back. I have a few plants. Um, I'm sprouting a bunch of, I sprouted a bunch of acorns maybe a, a couple months ago and they're just sitting in my office right now. Um, but I mean, that's, that's the most I can, I feel like demonstration wise, there's not as much I can do from home. Um, so it's kind of finding new ways to teach things. And, um, it's a shame because for me, ecology is the unit that's coming up and it's my favorite unit to go outside for and actually get to do you know, what I used to do. Um, so it's different, but from the student perspective, um, never say no to anything, I think is one of the biggest things. Um, you know, I did not go to undergrad ever thinking I'd be a teacher or to grad school. I mean, I had one goal in mind, which was, um, you know, like trying to be green, trying to help save the environment. And that was my goal in high school. And, you know, 10 years later, I still don't really know what that means. Um, but I mean, just keeping doors open, never shutting a door when you don't have to. Um, keep Just keep options alive. And then who knows when you're going to need that. And, you know, subbing, you know, way back when really helped me get my first TA jobs in Michigan. And getting my first TA jobs, I'm sure helped me get interviews when I started actually looking for jobs here. So um, with that being said, I feel like landing at Ridgewood, I mean, it felt like the jackpot um, because I love the community here. I mean, everyone's so close and um, you know, the fact that you guys are doing this, I mean, the, the high school I used to work at, every teacher had their own classroom, which, you know, for logistic reasons, I'm sure is nice, but um, they're not really forced to talk to anybody. And then you just kind of stay in your own shell and I, can't imagine being, you know, kind of as affable or as outgoing as I am now because of that. In that that's situation, that's great. That's great, Mr. Lou. That's that's great advice. Um, we're gonna enter the uh, rapid fire round. So, Mr. Fabish and I are gonna hit you with some alternating questions here. So, go for uh, it. Yeah, you know, buckle up. Nervous? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> a little shake and bake here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hold on to your uh, acorn plants there. <laughs> All right, so coolest place you've ever traveled to? Um, my students know I love Sweden. So definitely going out there. I'll go there, yeah. Greatest fear? Um, the unknown. Not knowing when I'm going back to school is one thing, and not knowing what's going to happen next year is another thing. So, um, yeah. I, li I like having control over stuff. What you're most looking forward to doing after, uh, after all this is over? seeing everyone again. Um, I've been FaceTiming a lot of my friends, but that's not the same. So getting to interact with people face to face again. Favorite Disney character? Oh, is Pixar the same thing? Um, yeah, yeah. I saw a spot for Toy Story, so Woody. Um, All right. Yeah, kind of ever long, everlasting friendships is kind of a thing I try to keep alive. So yeah, nice. Woody. Uh, favorite television series of all time? Seinfeld. Definitely Seinfeld. All right. And, and last but not least, uh, favorite food? Uh, I've been cooking a lot of fish recently. So grew up in an Asian household. There was obviously a lot of seafood in there. And um, Mirugai, which is a 
the sushi version of a giant clam. Delicious. <laughs> nice. <Great. laughs> well, Mr. Lou, uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, we learned a lot about you. It's, it's great to see you. And, um, you know, Ridgewood's very lucky to have a, a teacher like you and, and a person that's so dedicated not only to our school, but the environment, our community, New Jersey. Uh, so thank you for taking a few minutes. That New Jersey with- commitment wasn't, I, I started to abandon it and then someone got roped back in. But yeah. Well, you're back. You're it's, it's good to hear all those things. <laughs> thank you so much. Yeah. All right, Thanks, Mr. Mr. Lou. We appreciate it. All right, good to see you. Stay safe. All right.